we now have a release date for the first patch for Kerbal Space Program 2. The date is Thursday the 16th of March and additionally ksp 2s new graphics programmer has gone into some depth on the current state of the game's performance, along with what the team are planning to do to fix it. So let's talk about both of those things, starting with the upcoming patch. So the information for this was posted by Nate Simpson, creative director for the game. He stated that the 16th is the current goal, however, he very specifically said that this may well change if any show-stopping bugs emerge during testing. We know from previous information that this patch is going to be pretty extensive. On the screen, you can see just a few of the things that will be addressed. The full patch notes, however, will be released alongside the patch itself or thereabouts. Meanwhile, though, we can expect to see performance optimizations, flight and physics fixes, environmental fixes and improvements to the UI. The question is still out, however, on just how effective this patch is going to be, but hopefully it will address many of the more significant and game-breaking issues that people have been experiencing since the game launched. Elsewhere, more talk. One of the KSP2 graphics engineers, a new one at that, has been discussing the game's render engine. We all know that the game has had some significant issues when it comes to frame rates, broadly speaking, the performance problems can be broken into two distinct parts, graphics facing issues and CPU facing issues such as simulation. In the forum post, Mortok made a deep dive into the graphics side of things, specifically in this case, the game's terrain generation system. The terrain generation system is known as PQS Plus, or Procedural Quad System. KSP1 also used this system, however, Mortok pointed out that PQS Plus has been improved significantly over the original. Now, whilst the new and improved PQS Plus is very capable when it comes to generating terrain, it does appear to come with a number of problems. Here's the part of the forum post which specifically discusses that. It says, Clearly, the PQS system and related shaders are a big performance problem. Let's talk about that, but first, dig into some background. A core philosophy for the early part of KSP2's early access cycle is to make sure it still feels like a KSP game. This means that for each feature we build, we want to start with what KSP1 did and then build a similar system that improves on it. Following that goal, the team started with the PQS design from KSP1 and added modern graphics features for KSP2's PQS+. As development progressed on KSP2, more and more features were added to PQS Plus to keep pushing the artistic envelope, and that all sounds really good, doesn't it? In short, the dev team pointed out that they feel that the terrain tech behind KSP2 is far superior to that of KSP1. However, there's still those performance problems. While trying to build that ground up to our visual ambitions, we added more features than previous PQS architecture can support. It wasn't until the ramp up to early access that it became understood just how far past the limits of the tech we had reached. It turns out then that the tech may have been pushed far beyond its limits despite still looking very good and this may well explain some of the performance issues that we have been seeing. So the post takes some time going into numbers on just what, uh, what impact this is having on the game and if you want to check that out, do have a look at the original post. So that's the cause for some of the graphical performance problems at least, but how are the team going to fix this? Well, it turns out that fixes are going to be rolled into a variety of different steps, and there's multiple solutions to this. The biggest solution, which is likely to be a medium or even longer term goal, is to bring in a new terrain rendering system. So despite them already having created a, a new system in the form of PQS+, Plus, they want to start again and create a new system. This new system will be known as a CBT. Motok stated that it's way too early to share details on what this system means for the game. However, they wanted to make players aware that these massive improvements and changes are being worked on. It was also mentioned that this is a fundamental shift in the way that the terrain will be generated and therefore will break any current mods. In the short term, other fixes are in the pipeline. These include changes to the current graphical settings. The bottom line here 
is that in the future, the available options for low and medium graphics settings will be expanded. This will allow players to disable additional graphical features that may be a bit too intensive on the GPU. One example was used to illustrate this, and that example is an anti-tile system. So currently, this prevents planetary surfaces from having obvious graphical tile patterns. You can see some uh, graphical tile patterns in the image here. So the anti-tile system fixes this and gets rid of those tiles. However, it does place an additional burden on the GPU. So in future, it will be possible to disable anti-tile. It does mean that players who disable the option would have to put up with the tiled services. However, the trade-off, the gain, would be better frame rates. So that may be an option that people will want to look at. So that's all the latest information on KSP2. If you want to read the original forum threads, you can find those both linked in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.